Hey everybody, welcome back. So if you're wondering about my new fashion accessory here, this is a snake shed. This is off Apollo, our 13 foot Burmese Python. Because today we're gonna to be talking about how snakes shed, why they shed, and some of the things that we need to look out for as keepers when they are shedding. Some of the things that can go wrong. Today on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, Help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. So it would really be my luck. We finally get all the equipment set up, get the camera, the mic, all that stuff, the boom set up. All the audio should be really kicking. And what happens? We get crickets in our reptile room so we're probably going to be listening to crickets the whole time i'm sure if you guys can hear them as loudly as i can just try your best to ignore them i am not going to rip the place apart trying to take them out of here but i was sitting around talking with somebody today and i was like man you know i've got all this new recording equipment together and everything set up now i'm sitting here racking my brain trying to figure out what my next uh, video is going to be about he's like well why don't you explain snake shedding so i was like well i haven't done one on that yet so this seems like a pretty good idea so this right here, like I said, is a, a soft mud Burmese python. And these snake skins are made out of, they're made out of keratin, um, which is the same material that our fingernails are made out of. So snakes, uh, lizards, you know, their skin consists of, you know, like I said, kind of like our fingernails, except really thin and it doesn't grow in the same way that the skin cells do. I mean, everything sheds their skin, even human beings, you know, we shed our skin. Everybody ever always talks about, you know, once your mattress gets five years old, you gotta throw it out because you got a pound of skin on it. Well, you know, our, our cells will shed individually, but the snakes don't have the luxury of doing that. And especially with the snakes, you know, that since they don't have eyelids, um, this skin, these scales will cover their eyes as well. So when they're getting ready to shed, everything comes off. So their eye scales come off and everything. So since we got some good footage of Snoop here shedding, I thought I'd let him hang out with us for a little while and help us talk about this while he's trying to explore and climb all over everything. So a lot of you guys, even if you don't keep snakes, you may be familiar with uh, finding snake skins around. You may find them up by your crawl space and things like that. For more snakes have been in there and shed and went back out. A lot of times they try to be pretty solitary during the time that they're shedding. So the reason why snakes shed is because their skin doesn't grow necessarily. Their skin underneath here, underneath this top layer, there'll be new skin developing um, and that's how they grow and as that gets more fully developed it'll start to separate from the outside skin. Because like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a hard material, kind of like a thumbnail, just really thin. So they've got to get rid of that. Otherwise, um, it'll start to constrict them. And you'll see that sometimes on snakes that have been mis, uh, mistreated, not taken care of, where they're not given proper humidity and stuff like that. Where, I mean, you can get stuck shed around a tail or something like that that starts to actually constrict blood flow. And... Um, you know, can actually cause a snake to die. If you get enough constriction, you start getting toxic and so forth. So it's much like putting a tourniquet on your own leg. You know, you go gangrenous and, and get toxic and that's it. So it's really important, especially for us as keepers, to make sure that we're taking care of them in a way that they can all shed their skin the way they're supposed to. And that's why, you know, you'll hear us talking about humidity and stuff like that, because they need to have a certain level of humidity to keep themselves hydrated you know always of course keeping them in fresh water i prefer to give mine water receptacles big enough for them to get into and soak um, so as that's as that skin's trying to separate you know some oils and stuff that's secreted from the animal that'll start to separate that layer so that's what you'll see when they start to shed is that layer you know it's now like a glove and they'll always start from their nose. They'll start pushing from around their nose right here. And uh, you'll see it peel off the top of their head. Uh, and then they just continue to crawl right out of it. And depending on what you keep, um, I've got many different species here. 
and almost all of my animals give me perfect sheds. And when we say perfect shed, you know, we mean it's one piece from the nose all the way to the tip of the tail. And um, just about everybody gives me perfect shed, except my reticulated pythons. They are notorious for throwing confetti every time they shed. So granted, you know, they're big, powerful animals, and that thin little skin doesn't stand much of a chance. But, um, you know, I'll sit down here and I'll watch my 16-foot female. She'll soak for a week, sometimes two weeks, leading up to a shed. Just sitting in her water, doesn't want to interact with anybody. She just sits there with her little nose sticking out of it. And then when it comes time for her to shed, it's all over her enclosure. <laughs> um, but then again, you know, my corn snakes, the hog nose, the ball pythons, my boa upstairs is really good about giving me really perfect sheds all the time. So a lot of times you can tell a lot about the way a snake is kept and their health um, by the condition that their shed's in. Now you can get a couple problems that develop with sheds. Uh, the first one, like I said, is if the animal's really neglected and dehydrated, you know, that skin can just stay there and collect up on them while they grow and then that skin doesn't go away. Um, so that can be a problem. And you can also have some problems with uh, stuck eye caps. Um, you know, where that scale that forms over their eye doesn't release fully. So when they're pulling that skin up over their head, it may tear away and that eye cap may be stuck there. Needless to say, that's a problem. Um, typically with stuff like that, you know, you can, you can take your animal, you can soak them really well. Uh, soak them in warm water for 30, 60 minutes or something. And then most of the time those eye caps are attached to some other skin on your head and you can kind of pull it off. There's other times where you'll have to go in there with like a Q-tip and really just peel it back front to back in order to get those eye caps off. But that's why it's really important when you're looking at their sheds, and I do this on all of my snakes, first thing I look for is that little headpiece and I look at it to make sure that both of the eye caps are on there. So that way I'm 100% certain none of them have any stuck scales on their eyes or anything like that. Because, of course, they don't have eyelids. That's the only way they have to protect their eyes is those, you know, those scales. So we always want to check that stuff. And we've also got, you know, it's not just snakes that shed too. I've got a really cool foot off of my tegu. When she shed not too long ago. And you can see really clearly that whole thing came off just like a little boot. <laughs> and it's not as common for lizards to you know come off with these one piece sheds it's almost impossible in a lot of cases you know you'll see leopard geckos come pretty close to it but they'll actually eat their skin as it's coming off of them you know as they start to as that skin starts to lift off of them you'll always see them biting it off and they're reaching around back and trying to trying to eat all of the skin off of their back uh, you won't see snakes do that but you will see it particularly in leopard geckos and you guys I hear Cresties done it. I've never seen mine do it before, but I've heard Cresties will do that as well. Uh, the larger lizards, like my monitor lizard back there, the Nile monitor, he's another one you're not going to get full sheds off of because he is continually having some kind of skin coming off of him. Every time I go back there and sit with him, he's got a new section that's shedding, and I know he's really well hydrated because he lives in his, in his tub back there. Um, he sleeps in there every night. In the mornings when I come down here, I'll see his little nose up over the tub. And you'll never see him outside of that thing in the night. He does not does not like sleeping outside of it. But, you know, it stands to reason because the water is a bit of a sense of security for them naturally. So he feels more secure just sleeping in his tub. But yeah, like I said, I mean, he's always got, um, get on in there. But he's always got skin peeling off of him one way, shape, or form. Now, although you can use snake sheds as kind of a measure of husbandry, you know, if you have a problem with the shed, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're neglecting your animal. You know, like I said, my retics will literally soak in their water bowl for a straight week before they shed, and it just rips to pieces when they come out. Um, you, you'll see sometimes, you know, the stuck eye caps. I actually had somebody message me tonight asking me about it. And yeah, just going to the same thing about soaking them and trying to get a hold of some of the skin around it, pulling them off. Um, otherwise, using the Q-tips and backing them off. There's a couple good videos out there. I'll see if I can find some. Maybe 
I don't I haven't had a stuck eye cap on any of my snakes yet but if I do I'll record it and show you guys how we go about getting that stuff off of there but I thought it was a really cool topic something not too many people talk about and I know the folks that don't keep snakes may not be familiar with the whole thing uh, some people don't even realize that they shed their skin uh, but you know even going back through mythology and all that stuff the snakes were considered a symbol of renewal because they shed their skin um, you know, and it's also helpful to them in the wild too, because snakes will connect, collect parasites out there, make get ticks and, and things like that. And when they shed their skin, they'll shed those parasites right along with it. So, you know, one way evolution's kind of looking out for them, that little ad adaptation right there, uh, kind of helps keep them clean. And you'll notice it, you know, especially on your reticulated pythons and things like rainbow boas and stuff, you know, right after they shed, they're going to get that really bright um, iridescence coming off of them. Monty, my retake here, just shed the other day. And I wish I had the opportunity to take her outside because when I do, right after I shed, that iridescence is just so bright. Sometimes you can't even see her pattern because of how bright that, that violet light is that's coming off of her. Um, and she's just awesome when you take her out like that. But if you guys have any questions, if there's anything that I missed, feel free to jump down in the comments. Let me know. Uh, I'm sure there's probably something that I forgot to talk about. But I will go ahead and put in the end screen right here where you can go out and watch. Walking around with our snakes outside, spending some time out there with them. Now the camera never does justice to that iridescence. You know, maybe with this new camera, maybe this will pick it up a little bit better. I'm really hoping so because it can be really, really impressive. So if you want to see some of these guys from this past summer outside, go ahead and check this video out. I'm going to put one up of us just hanging out outside with the snakes and letting them run around. And we will see you guys next time on Intrepid Exotics.